One of the most horrifying and cruel periods in human history is the transatlantic slave trade. Between 1525 and 1866, an estimated 12.5 million Africans were taken from their homes by force and transported halfway across the globe to live as slaves in the cruel New World. But because of the appalling conditions on the ships that carried them over the ocean, an average of 15 to 30 percent of captives perished before they even arrived in the new land. Today, we'll look at what it was like to live on one of these slave ships and the horrific realities of what innocent African people had to go through as a result of the journey through the dreaded Middle Passage. The design of slave ships evolved over the hundreds of years that the slave trade existed. But today's popular conception of a slave ship is that of the large cargo ships known as Guineamen, named so because a large portion of forced slavery occurred on the West African Guinea coast. Slaves would be packed into these ships by the hundreds to go across the Atlantic to the Americas in appalling conditions. The Africans would be stripped of their clothes and have their hair shaved before being forced onto the deck to dwell in makeshift wooden huts until the crew was ready to depart. When the slavers were ready to set sail, they would force their captives below deck for a journey that up to one third wouldn't survive. Though there were also women and children on the ships, men made up around two thirds of the captured slave population. Women were kept apart from the men, sometimes above deck and unchained, but were subjected to much physical and sexual abuse from crew members. Some female slaves even arrived in the Americas pregnant, as a result of the brutality they endured on board the ships. Squeezed beneath deck in their hundreds, the men suffered in various horrifying ways, frequently in cramped quarters no larger than their own bodies. Far too small for a fully grown man to be able to walk, let alone sit up. These tiny compartments or shelves varied in height depending on the ship. The smallest measuring just 10 inches high and the biggest remained less than five feet. Shackled to each other at all times, the men were made to lie end to end in these cramped dark rooms and they would remain in this position for the duration of the journey, which may take weeks or even months. They were allowed one hour a day on deck to exercise and get hosed down in an appalling attempt at sanitation, but this was just a jailer making sure their prisoner made it through the voyage, not an act of compassion from the crew. On the slave ships, disease was one of the main causes of death. There were no facilities for personal hygiene or designated areas for the slaves' toilet needs. They wouldn't be able to clean themselves if they vomited, which was a regular occurrence due to seasickness. If they wanted to go to the toilet, they would have to lay in their own urine and feces for hours. As a result, illnesses like diarrhea, smallpox, malaria, yellow fever, and measles frequently broke out on slave ships. It's hardly surprising that these appalling conditions caused so many deaths and that the ones that did make it out were frail and ill from not eating much, as they were only given a little water and small portions of rice and beans twice a day, the bare necessities for survival. And that was only after making sure there was enough food for the crew. The suffering and hardships that Africans faced are still unfathomable to many people today. The psychological and physical abuse, punishment and torture were so severe that many of them attempted to end the misery by jumping overboard or starving themselves to death. The crew wouldn't allow this though, because a lost slave meant lost money. Force feeding was applied to slaves who attempted self-starvation, holding them down and using a speculum aurum to pry open their lips. Any acts of disobedience, including suicide attempts, were met with harsh punishments. The cat of nine tails, a multi-tailed whip, meant to ruthlessly sever the victim's skin in order to inflict the most amount of anguish, was a popular method of torture used by crewmates. Some crews would even inflict further excruciating pain on the most resilient captives by applying sea salt directly onto their wounds. This meant that diseases, starvation, dehydration, and torture weakened even the strongest slaves, making any attempted rebellion unlikely to succeed. Occasionally, however, a rebellion was successful, and some captives managed to flee the life of slavery that was waiting for them in the New World. The most well-known uprising occurred on board the ship La Amistad. Nearing the end of the transatlantic slave trade in 1839, slaves on board the La Amistad rebelled against their captors. Just over 50 African slaves managed to take control of the ship, killing the captain, but leaving the navigator unharmed so he could lead them home. The navigator had different ideas and guided them towards the north until the American Navy captured the rebel vessel. However, in an unexpected turn of events, the US court ultimately ruled in favor of the, the slaves, stating they did not deserve to be taken into captivity. 
The case became a symbol in the United States in the movement to abolish slavery. Over the three centuries of the transatlantic slave trade, far too many Africans were left powerless by the ships that carried them, and for those who made it through the harrowing voyage, the conditions in port were no better. After being forced from their homes and having their families torn apart, many wished that the nightmare ended on the very ships that carted them to the New World.